who can minister and who can testify of God? That is a question that we have essentially been circling around all summer long in our Sunday school lessons where throughout this quarter of lessons, we have seen that God, he can, and that God, he will use anybody. But who God can and who God will use, that is something that is argued. That is something that is debated, even in the church. As all quarter long, we have been taking a look at women. And we have seen that God, he can and he will use women. But even in the church, it has been debated, it has been argued as to whether or not women can teach, whether or not women can preach about the Lord. I have never understood that. And so what I'm enjoying about these Sunday school lessons that we have had all summer long is the fact that God, through scripture, we have seen that he will and that he can use women. And once again, we have a Sunday school lesson this week where we will see that God, that he can and that he will use women. We'll see that in our Sunday school lesson this week as we'll be taking a look at Hannah. Our lesson, it opens up this week there in the first chapter of 1 Samuel in the 20th verse with the woman who is again named Hannah. We are told there that she conceived and that she bore a son who she gave the name Samuel. Her reason for giving him the name Samuel, we'll see there in that verse, was because she had asked for him from the Lord. Now, if you do not know who Hannah is, if you're not familiar with Hannah, we can go back earlier in this chapter to the second verse, and we'll see there that Hannah, she was one of the two wives of Elkanah. Elkanah, we're told there in the fifth verse, that he loved Hannah more than his other wife. He had a second wife. And we'll see there that he would treat Hannah really well, even though she had no children. It was believed, it was thought that she was barren, that she could not have children. And so we'll see there in the sixth verse that his other wife, Penina, would mock her about being barren to try and make Hannah feel miserable. It's a shame. It's, again, that's, that is how we seem to treat one another. Rather than loving each other, we find a way to, to treat each other miserably. And so we'll see there in the 10th verse that, that the way that the other wife would treat Hannah, that it did stress her out, that it did weigh on her. And so we're told there that she eventually would turn to the Lord and she would pray to God about her predicament, about her being unable to, to bear a child. And so in the 11th verse, we'll see there that Hannah, she made a vow to God praying to have a son. And she said there in her vow that if she was to have a son, she would give her son back to the Lord. Now, something that you have heard me express before, especially when it comes to making a vow with the Lord, as it is said over in the book of Ecclesiastes, when you make a vow with God, you better keep that vow. You better be faithful. You better be earnest in keeping that vow. You don't want to make a vow with God and then break that vow, not be able to keep that vow. And so we'll see there in, our, in the scripture of our lesson here for today, we'll see that Hannah, that she did in fact keep her vow. We'll see there in the 27th verse that Hannah, she prayed and that she talked to the Lord about, about the child that God had given to her in answering her prayer. And so we'll see there in the 28th verse that Hannah, that she did dedicate her child, that she dedicated Samuel, her son, to the Lord by saying there, I also have lent, I also have given him, as long as he lives, Hannah said there, he shall be lent, he shall be given to the Lord. So I want to, to make it very clear to all of you, I wanna point this out to you, that Hannah clearly is a woman of faith. She is grateful for what God had done for her. She is thankful for what God had done for her, that the Lord had blessed her with a son when it was believed, it was thought that she was barren. And then again, the second wife of Elkanah was sitting there making her miserable. Here it is where the Lord blesses her. The Lord is attentive to her prayers and the Lord blesses her. And she recognizes that Hannah, Hannah didn't think that, that she gave, that she conceived a child and that she gave birth by her own strength, by her own power, by her own might. She realizes that this was a blessing from the Lord. And so again, she is faithful to her vow. She gives her son back to the Lord. And Samuel, if you aren't familiar with Samuel, you should know him very well because Samuel, he would go on to be a priest. He would go on to serve as a judge of Israel. He would go on to serve as a prophet of Israel as well. He was a servant of the Lord 
for all the days of his life. And again, he had a very wonderful mother who we again have met here today. Her name was Hannah. So our lesson today, it skips over, it goes over to the next chapter. It goes over to the second chapter. And we'll see there in the second chapter, in the first verse that Hannah, again, praying to the Lord. Again, Hannah, a woman of faith. Let's take a look at this prayer of Hannah there. In the first verse, we're told there in second ter the chapter there, that she said her horn is exalted in the Lord. She is rejoicing of in what God had did for her. Her horn in this sense, it is a representation of strength. And she's saying that her horn was in the Lord. She was saying that her strength, that it came from God, her strength, it was in the Lord. And so because of God's blessings, again, we'll see there in the first verse that Hannah, she admits to the fact that she was smiling in the face of her enemies. Hannah, she earned this, right? It's not wrong here for, for Hannah to be smiling in the face of her enemies because her enemy mocked her, right? Her enemy, her enemy was out trying to make her miserable. But again, in her faith, Hannah, she stood on faith in the face of, of mockery from her enemy. And the Lord, he blessed her. Do you think that Hannah was wrong for, for smiling at the fact that the Lord had blessed her? Do you think that Hannah was wrong for, for smiling in the face of her enemy? I don't. You know, she received her blessing from the Lord. And I, I tell you today, God, he has blessed me in the face of my enemy. And, and I am going to rejoice. I am going to smile when the Lord blesses me. What about you? If your enemy is there and they see you smiling and, and, and it makes them feel a certain way, that's on them. God, he is good to me. I am going to praise him. I am going to rejoice when the Lord blesses me. I don't care who it may make make feel a, a certain way. When God blesses me, I am certainly going to smile about it. I'm certainly going to rejoice about it. That is what Hannah, that is what she was doing there. Let all of those who enemies who, who will look on in anger and in bitterness because God has blessed me, let them just look on that way. I could not care less. And so we'll see there in the second verse that Hannah, she praised the Lord saying that there is none like him, none holy like him, nor a rock like him. God, he, Hannah was saying there, God, he is a strong foundation. And again, when you stand on that foundation, when the faithful stand on him, he is a rock that will not crumble. He is a rock that will not roll. You will not be moved no matter what comes your way, no matter what hindrances, no matter what obstacles, no matter what storms of life may creep up and might push against you. When you stand on the, the strong foundation of Christ, you will not be moved. Hannah, she said there in the third verse, we'll see that she spoke to those who were proud, those who were arrogant in their own way. And she said to them, the Lord is the God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. Those who live according to their own way, they like to believe that they know more than anybody. They know more than you and they know more than God. But I tell you today that last time I checked, the only one who was omniscient is the one who created all of this. The one who created all that is known, all that is unknown, what we can see and, and what is invisible to us. The last time again, the last time I checked, he is the one that is all knowing, not someone who is flesh and blood, not someone who bleeds like me. So again, Hannah there warning those who are prideful, those who are arrogant. In the fourth verse, we'll see that Hannah, that she spoke of the mighty, those who are powerful, those who are strong. And she said there how they are broken, how they will fall down. In the fifth verse there, she spoke about how those who once had much now have little, while those who once hungered are filled. Then she said there in that verse that, that those who were thought, those who were thought to, to be barren, she said there, that they're made to, to give birth. Again, she's able to say that from, from her very own experience, right? It was thought that she could not have a child. Sarah, in her day, it was believed that, that she was barren. And when she was of old age, what did God do for her? And so again, she said there to all of those who were thought to believe to be barren by those who, who thought that they knew everything, right? Again, God proved them wrong because they would be able to give birth while those who gave birth to many would be made barren. This again, she said, from, from what God had did for her. There in the sixth verse, Hannah, we'll see there that she then praises the Lord, saying there 
that the Lord kills and makes alive. She said that he brings down to the grave and brings up. In other words, he will rise up, he will raise up again. It's hard for us, right? It's hard for us to not see Christ in that, that particular verse. Because again, we know that Christ, that he died and that he rose again from the grave, that he was, was resurrected. It's, it would be hard for us to miss Christ there in what Hannah is, is speaking of. Now, what is very interesting is where did this come from, from Hannah? How would Hannah know this, that, that the dead could be risen again by the Lord? Where did this come from, from Hannah? You see, all of us, we know that God is able to do that today because we have Christ. We, we have studied of Christ. And, and again, we are of faith. But Hannah, she lived in a time well before Christ was manifested in this world. So again, where did this come from? Paul, he wrote in his first letter to the Corinthians, he wrote that the things that he spoke of, the sound doctrine of God, the gospel of God, they are taught not by the wisdom of man, but by which the Holy Spirit teaches. There in the 14th verse, Paul, he then said that the natural man, one that has not received the Holy Spirit, Paul said that they cannot receive such truth because it'll be foolish to them. Whereas those who are of the spirit, they can receive such truth because they are spiritual and they are able to discern that which is spiritual. I tell you today, I believe that Hannah, that word there that she shared there in the sixth verse and what we'll see her continue to say onward as we go in this second chapter here, I believe that Hannah, that she is sharing information that he, she has now received from the Holy Spirit because Hannah, in her faith, she had opened herself up fully to the Lord. And now we're seeing the spirit enter into her. And now we're seeing her relay things from the Holy Spirit. And again, the word in which she is relaying now from the spirit, it is the holy, it is the divine truth. Again, Hannah, a woman, by the way, is now ministering and testifying praising God of these, these wonderful works of the Lord that again, no natural man would know unless they have been filled with and received the Holy Spirit. We'll see there in the verse there, again, looking at this praise and prayer from Hannah, that through the Spirit, she praises how the Lord raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes. Again, it would be hard for us to ignore what Jesus, what he said over in the Beatitudes, where Jesus, he taught that the poor in spirit, that they are blessed and that the kingdom of heaven will be theirs, where again, in the kingdom of heaven, we are going to reign as princes and we are going to, to reign with Christ in, in the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you today that, that Hannah, the only way that she's able to, to praise God of this is, is the fact that she was filled with the Holy Spirit there in the ninth verse in first Samuel through the spirit Hannah, she praises the Lord saying that the Lord will guard the feet of his saints, meaning that again, they shall not stumble. They shall not fall into sin. She said there in the 10th verse again, Hannah praising the Lord through the spirit. She said there, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces from heaven. He will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. Hannah said there. So again, I, I tell you that, that Hannah was a woman of faith. And, and this woman of faith, I believe that she was filled with the Holy Spirit and she's praising God, knowing God. It is, she's praising God from a place of, of being in fellowship with the Lord. And, and again, anyone who questions whether or not a woman can testify of the Lord, whether a woman can, can minister the Lord, anybody that questions it, anybody that argues against it, anybody that doubts it, I hope that you would rethink where you're coming from. I hope that you would, would think it over. Because again, we have seen all summer long here where the Lord will clearly use a woman. God will use anybody to, to testify of him. You know, I think about what Jesus said, you know, if, if men, if men want to argue against women testifying and ministering of the Lord, 
I remind you that Jesus said, hey, if, if nobody will, will cry out for me, the rocks, they will cry out. The rocks, they will praise me. Look, God, he can and he will use anybody. And again, we have seen that all summer long. We, we, we finished our lessons with Ruth. And, and again, we saw that through, through a Gentile Moabitess woman that God, that he will use her. Again, I think of Deborah, the judge, the prophetess, right? We saw, we saw that in a recent Sunday school lesson as well this quarter, where again, God used her. Here we have Hannah today. God, he would use anybody. And, and it is important that we not overlook those who the Lord will use. We, again, we should uplift them. We should encourage them. We should motivate them. If you ever again think that the Lord, that he can't use you because somebody has told you that God won't use you, don't listen to those. Don't, don't listen to them who will tell you that God can't use you. Because I tell you today that God, he can and that he will use you. Be open. Open yourself up fully to the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit enter in and let the Lord put you to work. There is a work meant for all of us. There's a work that we should do to where again, we have fruit that we can bear. Good fruit that all of those who are around us that they can eat of and that by eating of that fruit, they can be saved. So again, I tell you today, I wanna to close out on that note. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the doubters. Listen to the Lord. Open yourself up to the, open yourself up to the Lord and allow him to use you. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.